Right, a very warm welcome back. We're in the Eastern Cape today and we're unpacking the uh, State of the Province address that was made by Premier Maswala on Friday and uh, some of the uh, big ticket items for the province going forward. Uh, the Eastern Cape, as I said, is a hugely important province in terms of population and land area and I guess also history. I mean, if you think about some of the legends that have come out of this part of the world, um, we've had a couple of presidents that have come from this part of the world. So an important province, but it's facing a lot of challenges. And we're just going to start unpacking this with the uh, panelists led by the Premier and also with some of the MECs and uh, interested parties that are here. Uh, so. <laughs> Premier, we need to sort of start to change the story, the narrative, as it were. Um, we've just heard from the MEC for Education that um, people are going to other places for education. We've heard from uh, the MEC for Rural Development that your fiscal envelope is smaller, and partly because of your population size, you're not getting as much as you would like. And you talked in your uh, state of the province address the need to transform the economy to create jobs and I think you're looking at 20,000 jobs uh, by the next fiscal year. How are you going to do this? Well, we are doing it, uh, Peter, because firstly it is concentrating on that which is already provided for and doing it well. Uh, look, we've got uh, an infrastructure bill program that is underway. It is just making sure that we deliver on time the infrastructure that already is funded. Right across, uh, be it on the road infrastructure, school build program, the health facilities, it's just making sure that there is efficiency in delivery. That, that's all that we have to do. And through that, we create job opportunities for our people. Regarding uh, the issues to do with uh, the movement, mm -hmm. there is, of course, a a natural uh, thing that we cannot stop. Uh, uh, we are one country and uh, we fought for it and people live wherever they want and uh, it's perfectly okay. People would go and look for where they believe they can get the best. Even within our, uh, right here in East London, there's quite a movement of learners uh, from Danzane and other areas towards the more urban environments uh, where they believe that there is good quality uh, schooling for their children to get in those schools. What we need to do is really, as I was saying at another time, really review, look at uh, the manner in which we provide educational services. The planning function has got to be strengthened in education and we begin concentrating resources and directing resources towards what one could call ideal or model schools uh, instead of having a proliferation of very uh, many schools that are poorly performing. I think we can better use the resources we have. It's a function of planning and coordination of what we do. And uh, it, it doesn't take rocket science, it just has to be done. People help us with it when we are not doing it. They vote on their feet. How do we know it's going to get done this time around? You've been part of this government since 1999 and some of the things you're fixing <laughs> Maybe you, you were part of creating, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, 1994. It's a transformation that we're talking about here. And uh, it in really involves, uh, firstly, making sure that we are in sync with members of the community and this, the entire government apparatus uh, start moving in that direction. And frankly speaking, uh, it is happening. I was in Port Elizabeth, as an example, just in the opening of schools right now, in a school called Luanzagas. Again, we're trying to sustain a very unsustainable environment there through the conversation with the parents. They themselves took the decision that, no, we must bring together these schools here so that there could be better effectiveness of, our, of, of the learning and teaching environment. It is happening. It can be done even with greater acceleration, and it requires leadership. That is what uh, I've actually asked for. All right, okay, we're going to unpack all of that uh, and let's start gauging a sense of this room and also people at home. Uh, we start with table number four. Pumza uh, Pichima uh, is there. Um, if you could stand up, let's uh, get your question and I'll note it down and then uh, hopefully we'll get uh, quick responses from you uh, just because of time. Pumza, uh, thank you very much. What's your question? Thank you very much, Mr. Peter Ndoro, for giving us this opportunity. My name is Pumza Vichima. I'm leading NAFU, National African Farmers Union, in the whole Eastern Cape. 
My question, in fact, is a concern. We just want to say thank you very much to our Honorable Premier. Really, at this stakeholders' engagement, we are working together with the government of Eastern Cape. We want to give a word of applause on that one. What we want, especially in NAFU, we want our Premier to assist us in fast-tracking of getting the applications of, form, of, pharma, of farms, especially in Eastern Cape, because our Honorable MEC, Mlibo Kuboshiani, alluded that Eastern Cape have got the potential, really it has got the potential, especially of the agroecological zones, because there are areas like Port St. John's where you find that you can get maize in two times in, in, in Eastern Cape. And therefore, if you're having those farms, really we are going to work effectively in Eastern Cape in order for us to attain a cross margin of getting the productivity of Eastern Cape. And then another thing is that we are very proud in Eastern Cape because the female farmer came from Eastern Cape. Uh, that one, the, 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 the female farmer of last year, that is 2014. Really, we are working very hard. So we want the, farmer, the females to get the farms, especially in Eastern Cape. And then another thing is that we want also to fast track the agro-processing because we're working together with international, international partners and national partners. Like close to me, we've got the BBC Black Business Council. We are very proud of them because they send us to these countries whereby we learn more. Like in this table, we have also having AgriSA. We are working yeah. in partnership with that. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you very much indeed. In fact, I think uh, you mentioned the Black Business Council. Let's uh, speak to uh, Pule Mkwena, who's uh, uh, right there, uh, just to get your questions. Now, your question was too long, by the way, uh, from <laughs> so, <laughs> We need to really shorten these questions. So, Mr. Mkwen, I want you to break the record and be fast. <laughs> thank you very much, Peter. Uh, my name is Pule Mkwen, and thank you very much to the Premier. I think uh, I read the speech, and I think the speech was very, very good. Uh, one of the issues that bedevil black business, and I think economic transformation as a whole, is access to finance, access to markets, and access to skills. And just to also elaborate on the other issue is that uh, government as a whole, and this was also mentioned by the president in his SONA speech, uh, the development of black industrialists. And the Eastern Cape is that area that has the potential to do exactly that. And the development of black industrialists is seen as a catalyst towards enhancing and fast-tracking economic transformation. Back to my question, access to finance, access to markets, and access to scarce skills. What plans do you have? Okay. That's not a question for you, but I think it's the question for the Honorable MEC as well. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, as with uh, uh, television, because it's live, uh, we We've got to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we'll get the final question from uh, Lungise Stofile right after this. Stay with us, and we'll put it through to the Premier and uh, his MEC. Stay with us.